Every evening we have to chant on the Brahma Viharas. May all living beings be happy. May they be freed from their suffering. May they not be deprived of the good fortune they have attained. All of those are wishes, aspirations. And then there's the fourth. All beings are the owners of their actions, heir to their actions. Whatever they do, for good or for evil, to that will they fall heir. That's a statement of fact. And you can see how far apart our aspirations are from facts. You look at the world and it seems to be full of lots of ill will, people acting on very unskillful intentions, with very unskillful motives. In the hope that they would all be happy. Or they would actually understand the causes for true happiness and be able to act on them. It seems pretty far away. Because that's what goodwill means. Not simply may you be happy whatever you're doing. Killing, stealing, having illicit sex, lying to people. We're not wishing that people will find happiness in those ways. You look at the Buddha's different ways of expressing goodwill. And they come down to, may all beings have goodwill for one another. May they not despise anyone. May they not do anger or irritation, wish for anyone to suffer. It may seem very unlikely that the whole world will ever be that way, but we have to make that our personal aspiration as a way of informing our actions, the direction we want to act in. Because we see that we really do want to be happy. This is the Buddha's basic assumption about all beings. Remember one time I was asked, well, the Buddha seems to assume they're all basically good. Why do we behave the way we are? And I said, no, wait a minute, no, the Buddha doesn't assume that we're basically good. The mind is basically changeable. It's capable of all kinds of things. But we do all want to be happy. It's just we have some very confused notions of how that can be brought about. We have to realize that if our happiness depends on anyone else's suffering, it's not going to last. And particularly if it depends on other people doing unskillful things for our sake. That doubles the, the bad consequences, because we're not only harming ourselves, we're harming them and getting them to break the precepts and getting them to behave in unskillful ways. So it's for our own protection. May all beings be happy. May all beings have goodwill. Take that as your Motivation for acting, it's our motivation for being generous, for observing the precepts, and for meditating. In our own case, we meditate so we can develop the skills inside that allow us to find happiness here, simply by the way we breathe, by the way we understand the breath. Hold the breath in mind. And we also do this as an example to others. I guess it's the good examples of human behavior. Those are what give us, give us heart as we live in the human world. And so in that way, our meditation is a gift to other people. I remember when I first went to Thailand. First morning, I looked down from my hotel room, and there was a monk going for alms. And it really struck me, more than I had expected. I had seen documentaries of monks going for alms in Asian countries. But seeing it in real life, that there really was somebody doing this, I found inspiring what that monk represented, that there's another way of living that doesn't have to be based on just 
making a living, competing with one another, in line with that vision the Buddha had of the fish competing with one another and drawing upstream. They're all going to die at the end anyhow. But the monk represented something else, a way of living, a way of looking for happiness. He didn't have to take anything away from anyone at all. He was living totally off of other people's gifts. That's how we live here. We manage to live off of other people's gifts. And we find that it's plenty. Maybe sometimes we get what we want, sometimes we don't get what we want. But we make the best of what we get. Because we realize that what we need for the purpose of the practice, in terms of food, clothing, shelter, medicine, is pretty basic. It's one of the reasons why we try to get away from the, the media of the world, because their basic message is you don't have enough, you don't have enough, you always need more, need more, need more. So we get here and we just sit down with our, our breath, and we really get a sense of having a sense of well-being, being with the breath. Then you begin to look at the other things that you used to look to for your pleasure. You begin to sort out what's really necessary and what's not. It's a very useful practice. And the more frugal we can be, the more we can be an inspiring example to other people. So maybe they might want to try the practice too, looking for happiness inside. Because otherwise all the world shows is people fighting one another and getting one another to fight and seeing it's to their advantage to create conflict. And it's pretty discouraging. If that's all there was to the human realm, it wouldn't be a good place to live. But we can make it a good place to live by our choices, by the way we look for happiness in a harmless way. So think of the meditation not only as a gift to yourself, as an expression of your goodwill for yourself, but also as an expression of goodwill for others. There are times when you get lazy. One way of overcoming laziness is to remind yourself, well, I'm not doing this just for myself. There are other people who benefit, too, from the fact that I'm doing this. I would often have that thought in Thailand after I became a monk and I was going out for alms. There were days when some very poor people would put food in my bowl. I'd come back to the monastery. I remind myself, okay, today you were the beneficiary of a poor person's generosity. That's something really special. So you want to honor that. Practice extra hard. So it will be for that person's long term welfare and happiness. They say that the Arhans in the Theravada tradition are selfish, but one of the motivations for Becoming fully awakened is that those who have given you gifts along the way will benefit greatly from that fact. So you're doing this not just for you, but also for them. And that thought can inspire you to better and better practice. Because it is all too easy when the practice gets difficult to say, well, maybe this is maybe as far as I've gone is far enough. But you want to inspire yourself in various ways to remind yourself, as long as you haven't really seen the deathless yet, you're not yet safe. Your happiness is still pre precarious.
It's only when you realize there is a deathless element of the mind. The Buddha was right, it's found in this way. That's when you can breathe easy. And again, you're not the only one who benefits then. So we practice as an expression of goodwill. Goodwill all around. Because the world really needs it. We really need our goodwill. The world needs our goodwill. So give it the best you've got. 